Hello guys, welcome back. Today, we will build a home automation controller using a Raspberry Pi 0W, two MOSFET switches and a simple web console that we can build on our own. By the end, you will be able to turn on devices and turn off devices from your phone or laptop or Wi-Fi. I will be explaining everything in a simple manner so that everyone will be able to follow me. We will keep the hardware clean and the code easy to follow so that you can customize it later. If you are seeing any errors or if you run into trouble, just let me know in the comments and I will try my best to help you. The complete code, the circuit diagram and everything will be provided in the description down below. First, let's take a look at the components that we will need. We will need a Raspberry Pi 0W with 40 pin header, a 12 volt DC adapter for the loads, two logic level N MOSFETs, for example, IRL is at 44N, some resistors, LEDs and a breadboard. And guys, this is the Raspberry Pi 0W and it's tiny, inexpensive and has built-in Wi-Fi that runs Python and a small web server very easily so you can control GPIO from any browser on your local network. It's perfect for small automations where you want quick results without cloud complexity. Now let's take a look at the circuit first. We are now in Altium PCB Designer. This is our Raspberry Pi 0W and this will be the brain of our project and will be controlling the rest of the devices. And for power, we keep two rails in mind, the 12V rail for the loads and the 5V rail for the Raspberry Pi. The 12V adapter powers all the devices directly. The Pi must receive a stable 5V. You can supply this in two ways. Use a good 5V USB supply plugged into the Pi or step down the 12 volt to 5 volt using a switching regulator such as TSR12450 or you can use any voltage regulator depending on your current requirement. We need to keep in mind that the Raspberry Pi GPIO uses 3.3 volt logic. That means providing a voltage more than 3.3 volt would damage the GPIO pins. So make sure you don't connect any 5 volt sensors directly to the GPIO pins of Raspberry Pi. For demo purposes, we will control two 12 volt devices using N MOSFET switches driven by Raspberry Pi. These MOSFETs are connected to GPIO 23 and GPIO 24 of Raspberry Pi. So whenever we turn on these GPIO pins, the MOSFET switches and the device that is connected to the MOSFET turns on. Then we have some additional LEDs for troubleshooting. Basically, that's all we need for the circuit. And since I'm making a PCB out of the circuit, I decided to add some header pins so that I can use these pins to connect other sensors and devices in future projects. You can set up the whole thing in a breadboard and test it first. And if you want, you can make a neat and clean PCB. But it's up to you. But a PCB makes build clean and repeatable. Everything fits properly and we can get rid of all the messy wires hanging around. Now, let me share with you something that might be really useful for you if you are really into electronics and robotics. If you have ever built a PCB, a robot or IoT gadget, especially with your team, you know the hardest part isn't always wiring or coding. It's keeping everything connected, your design, parts and the team. That's where Altium Develop comes in. It's a new cloud platform that combines the power of Altium Designer and Altium 365 into one space for real-time collaboration. Designers, firmware engineers, sourcing and manufacturing all can co-create together, seeing changes, comments, updates and collaborate on your project in real time. Just imagine working on our next robotics project and instantly checking if our microcontroller or sensor is in stock before designing the PCB or sharing out layout with a friend who is coding the firmware right inside the same workspace. Altium Develop makes everything easy. So make sure you check it out, the link is in the description down below and you will get a 30 day free trial. Now, you can flash Raspberry Pi OS to your SD card, then boot, connect to Wi-Fi and enable SSH if you want to remotely connect to it. Now if you want to know how to set up your Raspberry Pi very easily, you can refer to our previous video where we explained everything step by step. Now let's test the two GPIO pins to make sure the wiring is correct. And for that, you can simply connect any 12 volt device, for example, this LED strip and then run this script. Basically, what the script do is, it initializes the pin 23 and 24 as GPIO output pin and then turn on pin 23 for 2 seconds and turn it off. And after that, it will turn on pin 24 for 2 seconds and it will turn off. And with this, we can confirm the connections and everything is working fine as expected. The next thing that we need is a web console 
with which we can control the devices from our mobile phone or our laptop. In order to do that, we can create a small Flask web server that shows two buttons for GPIO 23 and GPIO 24. When you click on, the app sets the pin high and when you click off, it sets the pin low. The page refreshes to show the current state. Now, let me explain the code for you. First, we import the Flask and RPI GPIO libraries. We define our pin list as 23 and 24, which are the pins that are connected to our MOSFETs. We set the GPIO mode to BCM and configure those pins as output and we will initially set it to low. We keep a simple state dictionary to display on or off in the web page. The HTML is embedded right in the script itself, so there is no extra template files. And this is the part where we handle the web requests that are sent from our mobile phone to the web server. The route slash renders the page. The route slash toggle slash pin slash more receives a form post, flips the pin and updates the state and then redirects back to the main page. On exit, we force pin low and clean up so nothing stays stuck on. Now you can simply run the script. If you're seeing any errors or if you run into trouble, just let me know in the comments and I will try my best to help you. Now, when you run the script, you should be able to see the URL which grants you access to the console. Now you can take your mobile phone, open a browser and try to access this URL. And from there, you should be able to control the devices that are connected to a home automation system that is controlled by our Raspberry Pi.